Hello there all you RTS fans and fellow gamers. In this video about Big Castle, I'm going to give you many tips about building your kingdom, collecting resources during the day and surviving nightly attacks on the highest 8th difficulty level. Just like my previous video about Big Castle, this one is also a pair request from one of my newest subscribers. I'm going to explain to you how to maximize wood collection, the importance of keeping a high happiness level and with it a high spawn rate of new solar citizens, why you need to protect your neighboring wolf dance, how to most efficiently get more food, stones and sunstones, while also showing you how to control the direction from which the dark ones will attack you at night, and I'm going to go in depth about soldiers and combat tactics. The settings for this playthrough are unlimited game duration, fractal map type, combat difficulty at 8, divinity, resources and neutrals, these are wolf dance, at abundant and a lot. Tip number 1. Do not even bother playing unless you have a lot of trees in at least one cell which you can claim right away. The reason is simple. No trees means no wood and no wood means no buildings and no buildings means you can't survive the first night. So if you lack trees, just start a new game. This is soon going to be fixed by developers, so you shouldn't be starting any games without trees. Also do know that trees regrow during the night, so if you have cut down all the trees in a sawmill surroundings, send your solo citizens to another job until a new day dawns. You should build even half a dozen sawmills as one solar citizen will often be enough to cut down all the trees which are close by by the end of the day, because you really do not want them hauling trees from 3 cells away as that is very inefficient and a waste of time. Also bulldoze the old sawmills when you have a more important use for that spot and build new ones in better locations with many trees in close proximity. Tip number 2. When you actually do start on a map with a cell full of trees next to you, claim it instantly and make 2 sawmills while taking great care not to destroy any trees. You will not get any wood out of trees you destroy while placing structures. As you can see here, wood is the most important resource when playing on the highest difficulty as it provides the building material for almost all buildings and most of the defensive structures like walls and towers. You want to be building constantly and this is why you need to keep increasing your number of sawmills just like you expand your little kingdom with new cells. Tip number 3. Build your first house and never stop building new houses or upgrading them once you have extra zones to spend. This is because you will always need more population of solar citizens for jobs which will supply the resources for construction, generate sunstones to pay for the soldiers and of course be trained themselves into soldiers. This leads us directly to tip number 4. Keep your happiness level as high as possible to keep the spawn rate of new solar citizens as fast as possible. Because to survive against the dark ones at night, you need builders to build and repair defensive structures, but more importantly, you need fresh soldiers for your ever-growing army. To this end, construct a tavern, upgrade its workers' capacity to 3, and place fountains and statues everywhere, literally everywhere. These increase cell attractiveness and that in turn increases population happiness, which then in turn increases the solar citizen spawn rate and that in turn, well you get the idea, more happiness equals more soldiers faster. One extra advice, marketplaces also increase happiness by selling different goods, each time you find a new food source that provides a new good for a single market. In this way you can build half a dozen markets which produce extra happiness and a lot of sunstones, more on this a bit later. I will go back to the soldiers soon with more tips, but wolf dance are also extremely important. You might not realize this at first and even attack and destroy these, but there are no greater allies for you in this game than these wolves. They will attack any dark ones who cross into their cell and they will slow down and break apart enemy formations and they will even help you get through those first nights with no or minimal losses which is crucial for surviving on this difficulty level. A very advanced tip is that you can even lead enemy soldiers into wolf cells by getting close to them, getting their attention and then just running into the wolf cells with the dark ones at your heels. As soon as you clear the cell with wolves, they will attack the dark ones in it. And now I can already hear you asking me, Peter, but how do I make the dark ones attack me through the wolves territory? Well I will tell you this as soon as you click on that like button, hit subscribe if you are not subscribed already and write to me a comment about what you like most about this game. Now about that tip number 6. You can choose where the next knight's attack will take place because whenever you claim a cell which borders on the cell with the blue flames, which in turn marks where the next attack will come from, those flames move to a new random cell. So if the attack is from a direction you do not like because there are no wolf dens in the way and you do not have any walls or towers there, 
Simply use the wood you have been stockpiling and claim that cell. Keep doing this until you see the blue flames exactly where you want them to be. If you would rather just watch me play and see this playthrough without commentary, tell me so in the comments below and I will upload it soon. In the meantime, you can watch a 10 day playthrough just on a bit lower difficulty by following the link up here and below. Tip number 7 is about markets. These are very small and cheap buildings, but they are invaluable. As mentioned previously, they employ one solo citizen to sell one good each and they increase happiness. But besides this, they also generate sunstones and this can be boosted into a huge income by placing markets in close proximity to each other as that gives them a stackable 10% bonus all the way up to 100%. Last two tips are about soldiers and tactics. Tip number 8. There are 3 melee soldier classes in Big Castle, swordsmen, knights and spearmen and 3 range units, the archers, trebuchets and ballistas. Each one has its role and the best use for it and their stats are very different because of it. The first 5 soldiers you get for free. These swordsmen have both a shield and a sword and this shield is their most important feature as it makes them the best unit to attack enemy archers with. They are basically tanks for you in the front line and take those enemy arrows with almost no damage. The knights are the greatest damage dealers but have very low health. This makes them glass cannons and best used for flanking enemy formations, especially X-Men with shields or attacking big targets like ogres. These knights you should train in mass at the start of each game as they are the most powerful of fighters. Spearmen have their own weapon type which gives them longer reach in melee combat and gives them a stun attack perfect for slowing down those ogres. They lack protection just like knights so they are easy prey for enemy archers. And this is exactly how you should be using your own archers. To target enemy dark knights and perhaps more importantly siege weapon crew. Because the siege weapon crew is defenseless and easy targets while they are pushing ramps and catapults. The longer your soldiers fight, the higher their level will be and the more damage they can do. The level remains even after they die and are resurrected in the church during the day. And now the last tip number 9. It's all about tactics. Because enemies will attack in exponentially larger numbers and you cannot have as many soldiers as they do, you have to use different tactics to defeat them each night. One of the most useful tactics is to spread your army as much as possible and envelop the enemies. This is achieved by sending a small number of soldiers in the front to pull in the enemies and send the rest of your forces left and right to attack the enemies in the flank and if possible to attack their archers at the back. These usually take shots at your front line so send in the swordsmen first and use the knights and spearmen for the flanking force. Another way of dealing with the enemy army is to pull them into your city by not totally walling off your kingdom since the dark ones will go for the openings and if you leave those openings far between you can deal with one part of their army at a time if you are willing to lose a few buildings to do so. Of course you can go the other way as well. Build walls all over the place, place towers wherever you are about to be attacked and stick the archers on top of them as well as the walls and just wait for the enemy to come at you frontally and attack them with the melee soldiers once the archers have engaged them. The only problem are the enemy catapults which will basically blast off your archers from the walls with their pinpoint accuracy and the area of effect splash damage. Yours of course can do the same but I would advise investing in soldiers rather than siege weaponry as they require a lot of stun stones in maintenance and are not mobile. You will end up taking them off one tower and then building new ones to place them on the other towers and this is not very resource efficient. And those would be all my 9 advice for surviving on the highest 8th divinity difficulty level in Big Castle. If you want to learn more about the game, click on one of the cards on the screen right now. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.